I'm on the move and slightly out of breath because I've got a bull elk working up the mountain here and I got to hustle to get into position. The hunter called the wild is collaborating with me on a series of how-to videos. I thought, what a better way than to give a how-to archery elk hunt. One of the most exciting hunts out west and honestly, some of the best meat on the mountain. So we're gonna see if we can get up here in time, make some calls and get within bow range. I'm gonna bring you along and give you the tips and tactics on what it takes to get an elk of your own. The Rocky Mountain elk are often seen as the epitome of western big game hunting, embodying big mountains, wide open spaces, and a challenging but rewarding hunt. Today, there are over a million elk across the United States and Canada. They cover a wide variety of habitats, from dense pine forests to dry sage and juniper hills to hardwoods of the north, but the most iconic and populated habitat is the rugged mountains of the west. Elk calve in the spring? Yet the breeding is during September. During the rut, bulls vocalize by bugling. This is a challenge to other bulls and often a fight ensues for the harem of cows and breeding rights. Cows are also vocal, making it possible for a hunter to call in a bull. The best time to hunt elk is often during the rut when many states offer an archery season. After the rut winds down, bulls split off from the large groups and harems to seek solitude and recuperate before heading to the winter range where large groups may be found again. with this longbow so I need to either call him in or sneak within really close distance by stalking. I think I'm just gonna have to keep moving after him but it sounds like ah oh shoot there they are. They've already I didn't spook them but they've already just moved across and just started moving up the mountain at a pretty good rate. He's got his cows. That bull wants no part of what I got going on over here. It's just what elk do. They round up their cows, move off to try to keep from losing them. I'm looking for a bull that either wants to fight or one that's still looking for cows. Now I figure 
since I got a little bit of time right now, it's a little bit of a lull, we should go over some of the gear. This week I'm deciding to hunt with my longbow. It's the most primitive form of archery, uh, but very, very cool to try to get as close as you can to an animal. You have to be in very close proximity. I've got arrows tipped with really sharp broadheads, and then something special to elk hunting would be a bugle tube. This is what I make the elk sounds out of and try to call through. And I use these mouth reeds, but there's other kinds of calls you can use. This is just used by applying pressure of your tongue and air over the top, blowing through the bugle tube, or even making cow sounds without the tube. Now, on the other end of gear, once you're successful, you're going to need to be able to get that meat out of the mountain. So, you'll need a sharp knife, a stout pack, a knife sharpener, and some game bags. You gotta get all the meat back to where you started, so that's a lot of physical work. You need the physical fitness and endurance to actually get in the mountains and get to the elk, but you also need that same or more energy to actually get the elk back to where your vehicle or camp is. I think there's a misconception that how good of a caller you are depends on calling in more animals. But honestly, it's the people that understand elk behavior better that end up calling in more bulls. The first one is gonna be the locator bugle. It's just a single note, maybe two or three notes, but it's intended to be a long drawn out sound to identify where the elk are at. The purpose of this is elk in the wild do this to communicate to cows to let them know where they're at and try to find a harem. So it's really good at locating elk, especially early in the morning or as you're walking through the timber in mid-morning or day. Just a long sound to draw and hopefully get a response out in the distance. There's a few scenarios where a cow call works really well at drawing a bull into your position. So the first is when I see a lone bull by itself. I do a call sequence that I like to call the cow party. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to make a harem of cows or make it appear as there is a harem of cows and call to that bull. What I like to do is I like to get in somewhere where he's headed or kind of cut him off and then start this cow party where I'm just a call and response cows talking amongst themselves. It works really good no matter the season. So from early pre-rut all the way through the rut, it also works really well on any age class of bull. So younger bulls will be enticed, but also maybe a more mature bull will come in and check it out. And you don't have to worry about scaring off a bull that maybe just lost a fight. He's probably gonna come in quiet and check things out. So be ready and don't necessarily expect him to call back. Just get into position, set up, and throw out those cow calls, create that cow party. So it sounds something like this, just a lot of soft mews, mew, 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 here, there, here, there, changing the direction and kind of changing the tone. <coughs> Throwing out a few sequences like that will hopefully catch the ears of that bull and draw him right to your location. bulls all around me. sure the sound I'm hearing across the canyon is a mature bull. Sounds mean. Sounds aggressive. Sounds like exactly what I'm looking for.
guess that other group doesn't draw his attention. Got him coming in on the string. He's just slowly working his way. I only have to worry about the other elk drawing him to them. But he likes what I swear. He likes what he's hearing. I gave it actually more time than I normally would because it was starting to rain and I definitely didn't want to bump him. There's a lot of skills involved in hunting, especially traditional bow hunting. Patience is one of them, not just for the animal to be patient. I had to be patient, let that bull come to me when I saw he was working in, but also patience after the shot. Last thing you want to do is bump an animal. You want him to just expire quickly and not pressure him. So I gave him twice as long as I normally would. I reviewed the video, which was really nice. and could see it looked like a perfect heart shot. Um, I'm just hoping that, you know, he walked off and then went over this little rise. I'm hoping he's just piled up on the other side. Let's see here. Oh man, right here's good blood. Look at this. Really good blood. It's thick. I think that's a hard shot. I've got that other bull screaming over here behind me still. I'm gonna keep going. I got tracks here. This is pretty exposed. I don't know if some blood washed away. Oh, no way. He's just right here. Look, oh, right down there. He didn't go very far. Maybe, I don't know, from where I last saw him, 30 yards, just on the other side of the rise, piled up. Quick, clean kill. That's exactly what you want. That's why you practice. That's why you're patient. That's why you wait for that shot. Oh my gosh, that is a nice bull. Wow. Look at that. To be able to take it with such a primitive weapon, it just really feels very primal, very giving. It's just so much thanks that this is going to be the meat that I eat for the rest of the year. Thank you, bull. Wow. So cool. Breaking down an elk can be a big chore, especially when I'm alone. But for me, it's personally more like a labor of love. The hard work and everything involved pays off because I know that this meat will feed me for the rest of the year. I've got the whole elk quartered up, so I've got it separated into different pieces in the game bags. I've had most of them hanging, but I just took them down because I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna fit it in my pack. I'm gonna have to obviously take multiple trips, so we're gonna take the first load out, find the best route, and then come back and take the rest of it. Might take me two or three trips, but I'm, I think I'll do it in three trips, save the back a little bit, it's not super far. About a mile and a half or so. It's back-breaking work, but man, does it put a smile on my face. <sighs> I've got a hindquarter and all the loose meat, so back strap, ribs, tenderloin, neck meat in this pack. And then I got one more hindquarter left to take out. And then I'll be home free. <sighs> man, that sun is shining. It feels good. It might be hard work, but it's so rewarding.
And here we have it, fresh elk tenderloin cooked over an open fire. This is what it's all about, field to table process, bringing home my own meat, and nothing's better. So good. It's just a really cool to be a part of this game. One thing that I'm really excited about is my new character in The Hunter Call of the Wild. So you can go on there and play the game as me. I don't know if it'll make you any better in the game, but I don't think it'll make you any worse. 